Few times in human history has there been so much talk about the end times as there is now, due to pandemics, rumors of great wars, signs in the sky, and the cooling of people's hearts. The return of Christ has become a frequent topic both among Christians and here on the internet. However, many are taking advantage of this worldwide commotion to spread false prophecies or misinterpret biblical passages about the end times, only to gain more followers on their social media or simply to spread fear among people. One of the biblical passages that has been most used by these people is chapter 24 of the book of Matthew, where Jesus speaks about what will happen to the world before his return. So in this video, we will analyze everything that the Lord actually said to his apostles about the days to come. But before we begin, I want to ask you to click like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell on YouTube so that you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Okay, let's get started. Chapter 24 of Matthew gathers Jesus' last major sermon before his death, and it focuses on the end times. His return is the great judgment. But before we understand what Jesus said there, we need to understand the whole context of that moment. For this, let's go back to chapter 23, where we see Christ speaking to a large crowd in the temple in Jerusalem. At that moment, Jesus was criticizing the behavior of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who preached but did not live according to the word of God. Then, he brought harsh words to the Jewish people. Let's see what he said. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And right after that, chapter 24 begins by telling us that Jesus left the temple with his disciples, and considering the tone of his preaching inside, it was very likely that he was still angry about the unfaithfulness and lack of faith of the Jews. So minutes later, he starts prophesying, saying that none of that would remain standing and that the temple would be destroyed soon. The disciples became curious about this prophecy, and as soon as they reached the Mount of Olives, they asked the Master when this would happen and what would be the signs of his second coming to earth. Then Jesus sat down as usual, and began to explain to his followers everything that would happen to the world until the end of the ages. This passage is also known as the Olivet Discourse because of its content, and most of this prophecy is also recorded in Mark chapter 13. Well, now that we understand the entire context in which Matthew chapter 24 was written, let's analyze its content. These passages are difficult to interpret because besides their symbolic language, they deal with a series of events. That's why many people take some excerpts from Jesus' speech, misinterpret them, and end up conveying incomplete or even incorrect messages to others. Therefore, in this video, we will analyze three important points about Jesus' prophecy concerning the end times. First, to whom was this message directed? The majority of people believe that Jesus' words were spoken to his church, but that is not true. They were directed to the Jews. At that time, the Church of Christ was still a mystery. It would only be included in God's plan at Pentecost and was later revealed through the Apostle Paul's letters. Understand? It is important to make it clear that the events prophesied by Jesus solely concern the situation of the Jews during the period of the Great Tribulation before his return. Furthermore, Matthew 24 deals with false prophets and false Christs who will arise to deceive the people. These individuals raised by Satan represent a danger to Israel, as they do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that he has already come to the world once. As followers of Christ, we must be more concerned about false teachers, false apostles, and false preachers. In addition to knowing how to discern spirits, so that none of them lead us away from the Lord's ways. Amen. This is further evidence that the Jews are the target of Christ's prophecy regarding the end times. When Jesus speaks of the abomination of desolation, he is referring to the land of the Jews, the temple, and the sacrifices that Daniel had already prophesied long ago. Also, take note that in verse 16 of Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said that those who are in Judea should flee to the mountains, and this clearly pertains to Israel because in the entire New Testament, there is not a single passage where Jesus or any of his apostles ask the church to flee to the mountains. 
And finally, in the same manner, the text still mentions the Sabbath, which is related to the customs and laws of the Jews, and it also includes the parable of the fig tree, which is a symbolic representation of the nation of Israel. Did you understand? The second point we need to analyze is, when will this prophecy of Jesus begin to be fulfilled? Jesus declared that no one, not even the angels in heaven, nor himself at that moment, knew the day and hour when that prophecy would be fulfilled. Only God knew, but he made it clear that it would happen when the world least expected it. Let's see what he said to his disciples. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. But even without knowing the exact date of the beginning of the events that will mark the Messiah's return to the Jewish people and the establishment of his kingdom here on earth, the passage shows us that the prophecy will begin to be fulfilled during the seven years of tribulation, which will be the last of the 70 weeks prophesied by Daniel. One interesting thing about this prophecy of Jesus is that it is related to what the Apostle John recorded in chapters 6 to 19 of the book of Revelation. Many believe that the Church of Christ will not go through any of these events, as it will have already been raptured and kept from the hour of trial. Right at the beginning of Matthew 24, Jesus speaks of the first half of Daniel's 70th week in verse 8. Jesus said that all these things will be the beginning of birth pains, and these birth pains do not refer to any specific period but define the start of the time of tribulation, which is compared in the Bible to the birth pains of a pregnant woman. The beginning of birth pains is the first three and a half years of the time of tribulation, during which the world will be ruled by the Antichrist. Just as there are initial and final stages in the labor pains before childbirth, these last years are also divided into two stages of three and a half years each. Notice that there is a connection between Jesus' words in verses 4 to 8 and Revelation chapter 6, where the Lord opens the seals and begins to pour out His judgment upon the earth. Now let's analyze, for example, Matthew 24, verse 5, where Jesus warns the Jews about the false Christs who will deceive many. This is exactly what will happen when the first seal is opened and the Antichrist emerges to deceive and dominate people. Let's see what the Bible says. I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come! I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. And then, in verse 5, Jesus speaks of wars and rumors of wars that will happen, exactly what the opening of the second seal will bring to the earth and will end the peace. See what is written. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. And then in verse 7, Jesus tells his disciples that nation will rise against nation and there will be a great famine in the world. This is also connected to the opening of the third seal in the book of Revelation. Compare Christ's prophecy with the vision of the Apostle John. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, I looked and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. And finally, still in verse seven, Jesus speaks about various events that will take the lives of thousands of people. This is connected to the spirit of death that the fourth seal and the fourth horseman of the Apocalypse will bring. Let's see what the Apostle John wrote in the book of Revelation about this vision. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come! I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. And it doesn't stop there, my brothers. In verses 9 to 28 of Matthew chapter 24, 
Jesus begins to prophesy about how the second half of Daniel's 70th week will be. During this time, many will die as martyrs, which is connected to the fifth seal of Revelation. Astonishing and great signs in the sky will occur with the opening of the sixth seal, announcing the coming of the great day of the Lord's wrath. Many will betray one another in Israel, and deception and ungodliness will increase greatly. Love will grow cold, signifying that many will abandon their faith. But Jesus also guaranteed that those who persevere in him until the end will see his coming and participate in his 1,000-year reign. Another important point revealed by Jesus to his disciples is related to the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. This gospel of the kingdom should not be confused with the gospel of grace that is currently being proclaimed. The gospel of the kingdom is the message that will be proclaimed during the time of tribulation by the remnant and the 144,000 sealed from the people of Israel, calling attention to the return of Jesus, who will come to establish his kingdom, as we can see in Revelation. Chapter 7 Now I would like to go back with you to the verse where Jesus speaks of the abomination of desolation or the terrible sacrilege that I explained at the beginning of this video because many people believe that this prophecy was fulfilled in the year 70 AD when the Roman Empire destroyed the temple. These Bible scholars claim that this passage has to do with Jesus' statement that not one stone would be left upon another of the temple in Jerusalem. However, the prophecy was not fulfilled there with the actions of the Romans. The abomination of desolation will only be established by the Antichrist, having its full and definitive fulfillment in the middle of the last seven years, as prophesied in Daniel chapter 12. This prophecy of Daniel is clearly for the Great Tribulation, referring to a time of great distress, unlike anything that has happened before to the Jewish people. The third point that we need to analyze is, what message does this prophecy of Jesus bring to us today? My brothers and sisters, everything recorded in Matthew chapter 24, is a warning for all of us because the end times are near, just like the time of the rapture. Our world is filled with turmoil and unrest. Conflicts are happening in many countries, and the earth could be engulfed in devastating wars at any moment. Moreover, a large part of humanity is experiencing famine, and natural phenomena and catastrophes are increasingly present along with major pandemics that have claimed the lives of millions of people. Many Christians are also facing persecution for their faith in Jesus, and many are being deceived by people raised by the devil. In short, the earth is experiencing these birth pains, just like a woman in labor. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be prepared. Don't let the enemy distract you with the pleasures of this world or shake your faith. Instead, keep following Jesus, for he is the only one who can save you and secure your dwelling with him for all eternity. Amen. God bless.